Michael Brandon, and this is the story of the American invasion. They were very young indeed, 19, 20 years old, and here they were being whisked off to a foreign land to fight against a country that had become their enemy by accident. After all, Hitler wanted to keep the U.S. out of the war. He worried about what would happen if the Americans came in on the Allied side. Well, now he was about to find out. The Luftwaffe pounded British towns and cities during the Blitz. Thousands were killed, millions of homes destroyed. Even in faraway, peaceful Pottington, the locals can remember seeing British cities burning. Outside. In between these visits to the local pub, these civilian feather merchants in their cowboy hats and boots raced to prepare the air bases for the arrival of the U.S. planes and crews. The U.S. authorities understood that young servicemen might have, well, problems adjusting to life in Britain. So to help them out, it created this handy little guide. Instructions for American servicemen in Britain in 1942. Originally, this was a six-page pamphlet. The author was unknown. But one thing was for sure. He was a shrewd little cookie. Quite apart from trying to help young Americans and prevent unfortunate misunderstandings, it gives a clear picture of how it was in Britain in 1942 and how other countries saw it. It tells them, for example, that the British do not know how to make a good cup of coffee. You don't know how to make a good cup of tea. It's an even swap. That might even still hold true today. But not everyone was quite so impressed. Local lads, that would be those in reserved occupations or unfit for active service, didn't stand much of a chance. Well, if you were an ordinary English lad, up against a guy whose Hollywood made flesh, how could you? Many mothers and fathers, especially fathers, they were suspicious. They reckoned they knew exactly what these young American men were after. What part would the Americans play in this great offensive? Well, they came to England committed to a campaign of precision bombing to be carried out in daylight. The champion of the strategy was General Ira Eaker. They'd attacked it before, in August 1943. It had been a costly raid with losses running at almost 20%, but production in one plant was supposed to have fallen by two-thirds as a result. In those terms, the raid was deemed a success. Successful enough for the Americans to decide to do it all over again just three months later, on October 14, 1943. While the top brass argued about strategy and tactics, the ordinary U.S. air crew had to just carry on, making the most of their new surroundings and enjoying their time not in action. If you're a flyer and ordered on a mission in broad daylight tomorrow, tonight may be your last. Are you gonna turn your back on the chance for fun right here, right now? Well, the Americans are still counting the cost of the October 14th Schweinfurt Raid, or Black Thursday as it came to be called. Whatever its effectiveness, there was no way the cost in lives and planes could be justified. Schweinfurt was something of a final straw. After that, U.S. High Command decided to suspend daylight bombing operations. But the introduction of the Mustang P-51 was actually only part of the solution. The other part was how they were used. After almost three years, there would be no more missions and no more bombs. The 8th Air Force could pack up and go home. And the men in it need never come to England again unless they chose to. But there was, of course, one final chapter in the story. There were many airmen who met girls here and had fallen in love. They weren't after one-night stands or a fumble in a doorway for a pair of nylons. They wanted the English girls they'd met to be their wives. For infantrymen or air crew, it was all the same. They were called GI brides. Were killed or went missing in action during the war. 30,000 more were made prisoner of war. 6,000 heavy bombers were shot down. 2,500 fighter planes were lost. Eighth Air Force losses totaled more than those of the U.S. Marine Corps and the U.S. Navy combined. Only one in three U.S. airmen survived the air battles over Europe. The average U.S. airman was just 20 years old. 
nowadays most of the airfields are gone but there are dozens of small museums and collections dotted all over the east of england all of them reminders of an extraordinary period in english and american history and of the terrible sacrifices made not only by the men of the mighty eighth but also by the raf bomber command it was after all together that they helped to defeat hitler during the american invasion of britain <laughs>